Hello, this is Theo once again. In this tutorial, we will see how to do a seismic analysis using the ETAPS API, and more specifically, how to get our response spectrum and our peer fossils automatically into Excel. So, let's get started. The first thing we need is our ETAPS model. In this case, I will be using this high rise building as an example for this tutorial. And you can see that this building has two concrete cores in the middle, which I've already defined as peers in ETAPS and we will use them later on in our macro. But first, let's start talking about the load cases in, in this ETAPS model. And you can see that, that I've already defined my seismic load cases in both directions and they are working with the response spectrum analysis. And uh, you can see that they are using this function here, this spectrum, and we can take a closer look into it uh, in this part of the program, right here. So this is basically the, the spectrum that uh, I'm using for this analysis and you can modify it here and you can also see which values it is assigning to this function. Okay, so that was everything regarding the ETAPS model. Let me just put ETAPS on this uh, side of the screen and now let's um, take a look uh, to the Excel uh, sheet that we are going to use. So basically, I've already created a template here to fill in the, these cells with our results from ETAPS, but other than that, it's completely empty. And regarding our um, Visual Basic Editor, um, it's also completely empty. So I've just um, added a reference to our ETAPS library, of course, but other than that, we will be starting from scratch. So perhaps I can put uh, Excel right here on this side of the screen and the editor right here and uh, yes, let's get started. The first part of our macro focuses on getting the values of the response spectrum into Excel. And in order to do that, we will be using this uh, interface from the uh, API, from the ETAPS API, which is called C function. And uh, this is if I come back here. So uh, you can see that there are not too many methods available but so the bad news is that we cannot modify our spectrum in ETAPS but the good news is that we can get our values into Excel which might be interesting in order to create some nice uh, report or do some additional calculations or uh, something else. So for that we need to use this function but uh, before that we need of course to define our subroutine and set a, a connection with ETAPS model and a couple of things more. So let's get into it. Um, so now I will create the subroutine and I will call it, for instance, get spectrum. And the first thing we need to do is to create our connection with ETAPS model and I've already done this part in several other tutorials so I will go a bit fast now. Um, I'm just going to copy these lines from, a, from my uh, finished program and uh, at the end we don't have to forget to write these lines in order to um, clear up our ETAPS object, clean up our ETAPS object and uh, free some space in our um, system. Okay, so that's everything to create a connection with ETAPS. Let me just check if it works. Okay, no error so far. So uh, we are we are okay. And um, so basically our goal is to get the values from the response spectrum from ETAPS into these cells here in Excel in order to display a graph. And in order to do that, it's quite interesting. I mean, it's it's it might be quite a good idea to clear any previous data that might be here in Excel before. So in order to do that, I'm going to create another subroutine because we'll use it uh, several times and also later on in our macro. So that's very uh, practical, I think. Mm, I'm just going to copy it because I don't think uh, it's quite interesting spending time here, but uh, yes, basically we just have to Mm, introduce the, the first um, cell of our range that we want to clear and Excel we and this macro will automatically detect uh, which data has to be removed or clear. 
Okay, so now once that we've done that, we can um, go back to our macro and uh, let's just uh, take a quick look so how this uh, interface works. So basically, we can use this function here, get name list, and with that we can um, get information of how many functions are available in ETAPS. So let's just use it as an example to see how what we can do with the with the API in this case. And uh, just if I come back here, um, so what I'm going to do is to use a, a loop in order to uh, display the names of the functions that are already defined in ETAPS. But in order to do that, I have to define to declare my variables first regarding these um, values here and that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so now I think this should be working. Let me just check if it works. Okay, so now you can see this message here and it's displaying uh, its function that is already defined in ETAPS. So now in, that, in this tutorial, we will be focusing on the response spectrum, but it's also interesting to know that we can also get information from the time history functions in case that we would like to. Okay, but I'm going to comment this part because it's uh, it has no interest for us right now. Okay, so now let's move on. And what we want to do, of course, is to get the values from the response spectrum into Excel. And for that, we will use the, the function that I was talking about before, which was um, I just get values. So uh, basically, we will get the, the, the numeric values from the periods in seconds and from the accelerations. So this is the function that we will be using and first we want to clear the to clear the previous data in Excel and then to fill in the to fill in these values into Excel. So um, okay let's just check if it works. And okay it seems like it's working. So here it, um, Excel is taking the, the values from Tabs and you can see that we can uh, display our response spectrum in Excel. Perhaps it would be more uh, comfortable if I call this uh, subroutine with a button in Excel. So this is the macro that we want to run. It's time that we press this button and uh, let's just write get spectrum. Okay, so for instance, I mean, as I said, we cannot modify our spectrum from Excel, but the good thing is that um, the good thing is that we can just modify it, uh, modify it quite quickly in ETAPS, and then uh, get the data later on into Excel. So if I put um, ETAPS on the other side of the screen in order to see everything, or perhaps, or perhaps it's easier to. Put Excel here. Um, yeah, so if I come back to Excel, um, I can just quickly modify our uh, response spectrum. For instance, I can um, modify our ground acceleration or the ground category quite quickly. So this is the, the advantage of using ETAPS for that. And then later on, we can call our, call our subroutine in Excel and you can see that the response spectrum is automatically modified. So that was basically all regarding uh, how we can deal with response spectrum, spectra using the ETAPS API. And now let's move on to the next part of our macro. So the second part of our macro will focus on uh, bringing into Excel the peer forces from ETAPS. And as you remember, we have uh, defined two peers in ETAPS for the two concrete cores. And uh, yeah, we will be using these objects now. So let's go back to our Visual Basic Editor. And we have, we have to define our new subroutine to do that. And we will call it just get um, peer forces. Okay, let me just put it perhaps above our auxiliary function here. And uh, again, the first thing we need to do is to create a connection with ETAPS and I will do it just quite fast. Uh, okay, and now at the end, as before, 
we have to clear out, clear up our itaps object. All right. Okay, so now here um, is where we have to define our code from for getting our peer forces, but uh, we don't have to forget to set the right units into itaps because otherwise the results won't make sense anymore. Okay, so now I think that we are ready to go. So just let's take a quick look into the function that we are going to use. We can search it quite uh, fast here in, in the documentation file. So basically, here forces, I hope. Let me try again. Uh, that's right, peer force method. So this is the, the, the method that we have to use. Mm, unfortunately, there is no example here. But uh, yeah, so I've already done it for you, so it shouldn't be that complicated. Um, okay, so the first thing we need to do, because um, we are going to get result analysis from meetups, but we don't know if our model is uh, already calculated. So that's the first thing we need to check. To check if the load case that we're going to get a result from is already analyzed, or if we have to run the ETAPS model. Mm. So in order to do that, we will come back here again. Um, we have to uh, use another method, with, which is called uh, get case status, and basically it get it um, retrieves, retrieves information whether the load case we are going to deal with is already run or not. Okay, so let's just use it. I can put that here. Uh, of course, I have to define my itaps variable first, which I can do here above that. And okay, so now basically we are running that this method we've just talked about. And now, if the I'm saying if the load case, I'm saying if the load case. Um, is the one that is defined in this cell and if it's not run, if, if the status is 1, then we have to run the analysis. Otherwise, um, it means that the analysis are already uh, available in ETAPS. Okay, so that was the first part and now we can actually get our results from the peer forces into Excel. And in order to do that, we are going to use the, the other method that we've just uh, talked about, this one, peer forces, and it should be quite straightforward as well. So the first thing we need to do is to set the load case we want to get the result from. This is how the API works. So first we have to deselect all cases and combos for output, and then we have to provide with Lo which load case we want the results from. In this case, I've already defined it in this cell here, so that's the value we are going to use. And then we are ready to go, and we can use, finally, this function from the API in order to get the peer forces into Excel. So with this function, we get the, the results into these variables here, and now we have to write them into Excel. And again, the first part would be to clear any mm, previous data that might be here in this part of the of our sheet, and later on we can write the new data in that place. So, write results, but I have to clear the previous data, and we are going to use a an auxiliary variable, which is a, a counter basically. Because with this function, we are getting um, another values that we don't want, perhaps another locations or another lo load cases. So with the counter, we are just going to write the values that we want, let's say. So in this case, regarding this load case, it's nick x and the location, the top part of the peers, and the peer would be will be the core one or the core in the left side of the building. And again. I think it's more comfortable if we define a button in Excel and that's what we are going to use in order to call our subroutine from the Visual Basic Editor. Uh, this is a bit confusing now. Get your 
proportions. Ah, okay. I don't know how why I already defined this twice. So now let's try again. Okay. Better get clear forces. And now we can write it right here. Get clear forces. So now if I let me just put Excel in this side of the screen because I think we are done with the code right now. So if everything is working, mm, the analysis are not available in ETAPS yet. So our macro should detect that, that there are no analysis for this load case and it should run our ETAPS model. Let's see if that's what it happened. Mm, okay, so it's taking some time to run. So yeah, that's probably what it's happening right now. What is happening right now? Okay, so now I'm going to stop the video and uh, get back to you when the analysis is complete. Okay, so now the analysis is complete in ETAPS, and uh, if we are lucky, we will get the result from our peer forces in Excel right now. Okay, perfect. So, uh, yes, as you can see, perhaps I can do it a bit smaller. Mm. Yes, perfect. So the values are going, uh, are being written here in these uh, cells and we are displaying the, the values in this graph on the right part. So yeah, I think this is quite visual. And as we said, uh, we can change, for instance, the 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 peer we, we we want to get we want to get the results from we can we can choose the other um, concrete core and if I click here it shouldn't be necessary to run the analysis because we already have uh, those results in ETAPS and now we can see how the results are being updated and uh, yes we get the results from the other uh, concrete core and if we want we can even change the load case that we want we, we get the results from. In this case we choose the seismic load case in the y direction and now we will see how the yes how now the CR force in the direction number two is much higher as the CR force in the local axis number three. So yes I think this was um, everything that uh, I want to show in this macro and uh, yeah thank you for watching and if you want to get this code just uh, write your email in a comment in this video and uh, yes see you in further tutorials thank you very much